Hey everyone, it's Eric here from Lafix. Got another video for you guys today. Thanks for joining me on another journey through data recovery. And we got one of these Western Digital Drives uh, today. It made it here. Uh, there was a little bit of snow that we had not too long ago. I think it was uh, like two weeks ago. And then we had a little bit of a dusting on Sunday night. And it was really cold though. It was, it was like 20s and then it hit the teens. And I think it even hit single digits or it's going to hit single digits this week, which is pretty cold. But you guys aren't here for weather report, you guys are here for this ice cold uh, data recovery. So we have this uh, drive, this Western Digital Drive, it's a mail-in, it's here for data recovery. Uh, they just brought it in like this, they sent it like this, this three and a half inch drive. So usually when you get a three and a half inch drive, it most likely is going to be from like an OS, especially if it's an older one, but it also could be from an enclosure. Maybe someone took it out of like a USB style enclosure and then they um, had a trouble with it, they still couldn't read the drive. They, they probably put something in like a sled, like we have one of these uh, SATA sleds. Now it's here, right? Because you can only do so much just using Windows or something like that. So let's go ahead. Let's see what it's doing right now. Um, oh man, I always connect the cables. Do I have it even plugged in? I have. Oh, I have the other one plugged in. All right, let's see. So I have. Let's go ahead and plug in. I got a USB-C one. I'm not big found. I'm not very fond of the USB-C anything outside of just ready for phone connections. All right. So let's go ahead. Let's plug it in. Um, we have our sled here. Let's see, so we plug it in, and I heard things spin up, or at least try to spin up. We're looking at this light, and this light, you want to see, obviously, is for power. If it blinks, that usually means it's a communication, right? It's communicating with the drive itself, so there will be a data line. So it still is spinning, but the, the light went off. So it um, looks like there's probably like a shorter communication issue with the drive itself. So let's go ahead and take a look at it, um, uh, I guess, under the camera, right? All right. So we have the drive, uh, so let's go ahead and just, um, we want to remove the, the PCB there and uh, take a look at it from there and plug it in and then see what we're going to be getting, right? Because it is powering on, it's spinning up, but that light just doesn't want to stay on. Um, hopefully the head seems to be okay, most likely it probably is in this case, but don't really know. We want to get to that last, we want to make sure everything, the PCB is good, at least on this side, because the communication starts uh, here right uh, with the drive itself. So let's pop this, now let's take a look at it and see. So just a, a few screws and then we have this, right? We have our main PCB, which we have a controller, we have our main BIOS there, and then we have uh, power management areas, we have other stuff there. So we see, it. is there anything obvious? Uh, we see sometimes that these connections can be a bit dirty, so we may just need to clean them off. Um, we do definitely wanna make sure we don't scratch them because if you scratch them, then you're not gonna be able to read because this is what helps um, connect to the drive here, right? Because we have um, usually two main connections. You have a connection that goes here to the drive, and then you also have uh, the little pad connection that goes over there too. So you get your spindle and motor. All right, so let's look under there. We see our main uh, BIOS chip. All right, so this is our main uh, BIOS chip here. Let's look, we do see some area, right? Oh, this is black. That just could be the um, foam. On the top there. Yeah, that could just be from the foam touching. We see some of these, see how dirty and stuff like this gets? We're gonna make sure we at least clean this off. We'll do that. Uh, we don't wanna scratch it because then you're gonna have a problem. We'll clean that off. But let's see if there's any obvious uh, other things going on. Just around where the power input is, around here. So you use a lot of this too. This is just part of the little foam that it was uh, being covered. Doesn't really mean anything. And sometimes this can be a problem too. This shorts out a lot, this area here. Uh, so we probably just will maybe want to swap that out because that's usually a big uh, problem for our input. I don't see anything that's obvious out of the ordinary. So we know this area, uh, we replaced this before and we showed another one. And um, let me go ahead and uh, we, sh we should have another one here too. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and uh, measure this. Let me see if it shows any type of short because we've seen it on, on this area so many times. We just done it. I remember showing another video <laughs> that we showed it before and it seems like because it's coming up and then it's dying, um, that would be a thing. So let me go ahead and see if we can measure it. See if there's any short or something. I think we have an exact one too. Okay. We'll remove it and replace it and then go from there because usually it should give a better consistency when we do that anyway. So let's go ahead. Um, I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. We'll uh, remove this, plug it in, and then see if we get any difference on at least a the thermal cam. Okay. And we're pretty close to plastic, but that should be okay.
Okay, easy. Comes up pretty good, especially when you put some little bit of solder on it. Oh, it's good, right? I don't even touch it up. Look at this one. Oh, turn it on, you see that? Wow. So that came up pretty good. Looks to be pretty good, right? Pretty healthy. So you're just gonna power on and stay consistently on and we're able to see stuff uh, from there. So let's go ahead and do that. Put it back. And um, let's see if we get consistency this time. Okay, so it looks like we put it back. Um, replaced the, the component there. Okay, so if the light comes on, see if it blinks, let's see if it pops up. Blinking is usually a good indicator that there's some type of data, right? It is spinning again. Maybe it takes a little bit of time, a little bit of time. Oh, there we go. So you saw that. And I did get a pop-up for something here. Let me see. But it looks like it's just a regular uh, partition. So let's see, if I go down, it looks like there is another drive there. Okay, so we do see uh, something that's good and we just see something that's bad. So it looks like there is a small partition. There wasn't really anything there, just as apps drives. And then there's also this unallocated, which the size of the drive is about 500 gigs. So there's an unallocated section of the drive. So most likely there still is a problem. Maybe it's not correctly reading there. Uh, maybe Windows is still giving a problem for that. So what we need to do is we're gonna go over to our uh, more advanced data recovery tools. So we can go ahead and see to make sure about the other partition, make sure we can read it all as one drive. But it is staying on. It's very consistent now as we can see so we fixed something on the PCB but obviously because of anything in general um, we don't want to risk anything so we'll go ahead and make sure we disconnect let's go ahead and see we're going to use our advanced data recovery tools go look at that and then um, see if we can read the data better from there so let's plug it in our advanced data recovery tools and this will help us work with the drive in ways that Windows can't. We're able to see the drive information and we're able to work with it enough to where we can see um, the multiple different heads. There are four heads here. Um, they all look to be okay because we did do a checks on them. Um, once we are able to do that, we can actually see the new partition that has the data. So we're going to go ahead and image it and then recover the data for the customer. So anyways guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video on recovering the data from a Western Digital uh, hard drive. This is a three and a half inch. It's a bit of an older one um, that didn't have any hardware level encryption, which is good because a lot of the newer ones do have hardware level types of encryption. So uh, if we see anything, we actually show a video working with that as well, as well as converting from USB to SATA. If you guys are interested in those videos, go ahead, check out those videos. We also make lots of data recovery videos in general, and we do uh, MacBooks repair if you guys are interested in that, and we do MacBooks even for data recovery. So if you guys are interested in that, or even interested in sending something in for us to work on and recover your data or even fix your MacBook, do liquid spill repair or data recovery, check out the contact information linked in the description below. We'd love to help you guys out with that. So hope you guys are gonna watching again. I appreciate it. I'm gonna go ahead and put a jacket on and I'm gonna go get some coffee right now because it is absolutely freezing cold out there. Hope you guys are staying warm, feeling good, and see you guys next video. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Take care, bye.